Hi everybody, welcome back to Electric Car Converts. I'm Barnaby, owner and founder, and this is a 1985 Land Rover 90 that we're converting to electric Tesla power. So today we're gonna to be talking about batteries. This is a 5.3 kilowatt hour Tesla battery, and five of these are gonna be going into this Land Rover. So there are two main batteries that we can use on conversions. The first is this Tesla battery, and the second is called an LG Chem battery. Now an LG Chem battery is about this big by this big. It's less energy dense than a Tesla battery, which is why we're using a Tesla battery. But you may use it on other conversions in if you need to fit batteries in smaller places, such as in a Mini where you need to crown them in the edges of the boot, or other two-seater sports cars, or whatever it may be that can't fit such a big Tesla battery pack like this. Obviously in the Defender, we've got a lot of space, so we can fit these more energy dense batteries, but each to their own. At the end of the day, they're roughly the same in terms of the energy density and the way that they work. So let's talk you through this 5.3 kilowatt hour Tesla battery. The first thing you'll notice is about 70 cm long and it's sort of like almost like a tile shape, okay? So it's very, very heavy. It's about, you won't even lift it like that. It's about 25 kg. And think of 25 kg as when you're checking in um, at the airport and you're being told that your bag is perhaps a little bit too heavy. That's how heavy this is. And obviously this is only a much smaller compartment showing you how energy dense these batteries are and how heavy batteries are overall. We always handle the batteries by these rails and this rail and the similar the other side is where it slots into the battery pack, okay? So we're gonna have five of these batteries, one on top of the other, that are gonna slide into a battery box and sit in the engine bay here. This Tesla battery on its own is 5.3 kilowatt hours. We're gonna be putting five in this car which is gonna take it up to 26.5 kilowatt hours. Similarly with voltage, this runs a 22.8 volt nominal voltage and when we times this by five we're getting around the 120 volts mark 120 is perfect for the hyper 9 motor that's going in here because it's in the specific voltage range let's talk about the specifics of this battery this battery has 444 individual panasonic cells now a panasonic cell is slightly bigger than your household double a battery um, and the 444 in here are configured in a 74P6S configuration. So what that means is 74 cells are wired together in parallel six times, which is the 6S. So out of the car, the Tesla Model S batteries have a Tesla daughter board in them. Now a daughter board is, think of it as the brain of the battery. It's what connects to the main battery management system. We can't use the Tesla daughter boards because they won't talk to the battery management system in this conversion. So we have to change them out. We've actually swapped them for aftermarket daughter boards, which we've wired in here and will allow the battery to speak to the rest of the battery management system. Now the battery management system is doing things like checking heat, checking for too high a voltage, too low a voltage. Perhaps an individual cell is discharging too quickly or perhaps it's getting charged up too quickly. This central brain is what monitors all of this and allows for and makes sure that it doesn't wreck itself by going too hot or running at too low voltage, etc, etc. So it's very important that we have an updated daughter board in these batteries and that that also connects to an overall battery management system. So a question we always get asked is around the life cycle of the battery, i.e. how many total miles can the battery pack do before it dies? Now, this is dependent on so many things, such as your acceleration, the temperature that you're using them in, how far you're going on each trip, but it all boils down to the number of charge cycles that go through a battery. So if you imagine your mobile phone, if you plug it in every single night when it's still on 60, 70%, you're running a charge cycle through it and therefore degrading the battery. Now, Tesla batteries are rated for 1,500 charge cycles, i.e., you can plug it in 1,500 times and it won't lose any of its capability. Now, this amounts to more than 150,000 miles if you think about it in that way. So really, in a classic car, you're gonna struggle to go over 150,000 miles in let's say 10 years. So think of these batteries as lasting longer than perhaps a diesel engine that would be in, these, in this specific car originally. 
Now, when they do die, let's say I've run this car for 150,000 miles over 10 years and the battery is dead. All we need to do is take the battery box out, plug a new one in and off we go again. We've got another 150,000 miles of life. Now, this also works with increasing your range. So you may think we have five batteries in this car. If we wanted to double the range, we can add another Tesla battery pack of five modules again, maybe put it in the back somewhere and therefore double your range. So what I'm saying is that EV conversions are very modular. If you need to take a battery out and replace it, that's absolutely fine. If you want to add two or even three battery packs, off we go. It's a bit of a plug and play situation and another great reason to convert your car to electric power. Finally, let's talk about the cooling. So there are two cooling pipes on this Tesla Model S battery. Coolant goes in and goes back and forward throughout all the cells and then back out into a radiator. In this build, we're not actually going to be using the cooling system of the battery because we won't be using the battery to its maximum potential. So if you think about it, this battery was built and designed for a Model S. Now a Model S goes from 0 to 60 in a couple of seconds, whereas in this Land Rover, we're not going to be running that kind of horsepower through the car and therefore not going to be drawing so much energy from the batteries. The cooling system is used to cool down the battery when you're really putting your foot down in a, in a normal Model S. But as we won't be doing that and drawing so much current in our Defender, we, it's not going to heat up enough to warrant that cooling system and the added complexities of this. If later down the line, I plug in a, in a higher horsepower motor, I can add a cooling system later on. It's only a little radiator that will go with it just to keep the battery system cool. So there we have it. There's a little bit of information about this Tesla Model S 5.3 kilowatt hour battery that's going to be going into this car. There are a whole load of other battery points that we'll talk about at a later date, but that gives you a bit of an overview. As ever, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to get in contact. You can email us, you can phone us, go to our website, read our blogs, have a look at some information on there. Ultimately, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel um, and you'll see a whole load of regular updates about this build, some tech points and a whole load of other things that we're going to be doing throughout the years of Electric Car Converts. So thank you very much for watching and I hope that that's answered some questions on batteries.